Hi everybody, welcome to Facebook Live. Um, so many months ago we did it the first time and here we are to roll out a whole new idea for Belcanto Bootcamp. We have spent so many months getting to know so many people from all over the world and Derek and I cannot be happier to share the new Belcanto Bootcamp website with you today. Uh, we are rolling out membership for all. Until this moment, it was kind of part of the game that you had to do the Vakai project with us. So you all know us as the Vakai people um, on the internet. But these days we are branching out and we are ready for post-COVID life. We are here to move on and move into the future with all kinds of new offerings. Uh, Derek is going to tell you a little more about the website. Uh, the website is basically now constructed in three main portals. We've had Guided by Voices uh, all along or for some time, uh, curated by Stephen Tharp, who made that fantastic listening video that you heard. We're introducing the Belcanto Bookshelf, which is uh, curated by uh, Dave Ekstrom, which is where we learn about singing through reading about it, both through treatises and books about operatic history and style and performance practice. But the newest um, part of our website is the gym floor. When we are people that love the gym uh, in our lives, and we found that um, the kind of idea of having a place to go to build a skill-based um, technical approach to singing, which we believe is the way to go, and the place where you can isolate, say, I, I need this skill, How? what is the name of that skill, what are the exercises I need to do that skill, how do we know that that skill was taught 200, 250 years ago, um, and to put that all in one place uh, with both the voices from the past, some of our current Belcanto Bootcamp voices from the present, and um, hopefully your voices in the future all in one place where you can go and practice. Um, do you wanna play the Why the Gym Floor video now? Why don't we play the Gym Floor video to get us started? This is our very first infomercial. We hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Rochelle from Belcanto Bootcamp, and welcome to the gym floor. My partner Derek and I are both huge fans of going to the gym. The thing we love most about it is the community. And we love that even though we are not professional fitness people, we are embraced in our gym as people who love getting better at it. And you know, at the end of the day, that is what singers are trying to do at whatever level they are. We are training to get better. On the Belcanto Bootcamp gym floor, you will find singers at all levels. People who just love to sing, people who sing in their community choirs, students, young artists, professional singers. We are all here to work on our technique and become better singers. And some of us are here to become better audience members. You know what I love about sports? I love the community and I love that the majority of people who watch sports still take part in some way actively in it. Dads play catch with their kids in the park and go to the ballpark in the evening. People who go to the US Tennis Open tend to love still playing tennis. The other thing that I love is how great people are at working together and practicing together. And that is a crazy thing that we here at the Hunter Group can do. We practice together. It struck me during COVID times how isolated we all felt. As COVID times progressed, I realized that singers feel a sense of alienation from each other, even during normal times. It is very hard for a young singer, or an older singer for that matter, to feel a sense of community in a world that really is gate-based. What do I mean by that? singers manage to find some community for the four, five, six weeks of the production, and then everybody goes their own way again. What we discovered in the past six months is the great joy that singers find in practicing together, in sharing ideas while they're honing their skills. I want to talk a little about why 
we have this skill-based approach. I find that the world is pretty good at telling singers, you are technically perfect, you have all the skills you have. What it is you lack is artistry, expression, personality. It strikes me that this is not necessarily the right way to look at the problem, or in fact, that the problem might be a different one. I find that singers very often have a burning desire to speak their mind, to express themselves, but their technique hampers them. If you are somebody who has been told your technique is perfect, you just need that little something extra, but deep down you think, my technique is not perfect, and this is why I do not get to express the music the way I want to, well, Counter Bootcamp is for you, and the gym floor is for you. We are often told that we have to look at the big picture, forget your technique, leave your technique in the, in the dressing room, just be yourself on stage, communicate. Leaving your technique in the dressing room is not something that any tennis player would ever consider. It doesn't even strike them as a possibility, right? I play the game with the technique I have. It is part of my expression. Here at Welcome to Bootcamp, we try to really encourage you to use your technique to unlock your imagination. Getting into detail is an important thing to do, and it's also a fun thing to do. When you really break down the details of what it is you're working on, you can have an incredible sensation of accomplishment, pride in your work for the day, and a real clear vision of how this will help you in your pursuit to sing your art. So often I find that people want to protect singers from detailed work as if that would mire their minds in a way that they could not possibly then express themselves. We like to take the opposite approach. If you are really good at the details, if you are really good at understanding how to get better, you have a freedom in seeing what you can imagine. Technique allows you the possibility to truly express what you imagine. What a great world that would be. What a great world indeed. Of course, it's kind of weird little to see myself <laughs> sitting around talking at my piano and here I am in the same spot, which is where I've spent a lot of COVID time uh, talking at, at a computer screen and communing with people uh, all around. Um, I think without further ado, we should actually look at the website. Derek, what do you think? Um, we can look at the website. Uh... If you go and um, look at the uh, portal, um, we let me see if I can get the screen share going. Um, we have. Uh, so here, when you go to the home page, you see that we go and you'll see Gem4. Um, here's information for members. We click through here. This is where we get lots of information. Um, here's our one of our new projects, which is our Audiophile Society, which we'll hear about in a bit. Here are all the different Gem4 stations, which we'll go into detail later, um, and information about the uh, bootcamp intensives that we have here. Um, let's take a quick look. If we go out of the Gem4, Here's Guided by Voices, which is available for anyone to read Stephen's wonderful blog and listen to the videos like we made. Um, but participation in the Audiophile Society, as we'll discuss in a bit with Stephen, is in our membership program. One of the big things that we want to make clear about Hunter Bootcamp is that membership really is for everyone who has a stake in the opera business. Um, and not only for singers, not only for pianist coaches, but also for the opera fans who aren't able to enjoy live performance and maybe want to hone their skills. Um, we can also read uh, on the bookshelf. Uh, we have lots of our treatises here. Uh, Dave has written many blogs uh, over the past few weeks where he kind of goes into detail about specific uh, books that he has read in his library, what information you can get from them. And it's really fascinating as kind of someone who maybe isn't familiar. If you're someone who isn't familiar with a lot of books, you can have a, someone with a lot of expertise in this area 
give you kind of rundown of what you can expect to learn from that. Um, when, when people become a member of Belhanto Bootcamp, what I find very interesting is that we have this uh, welcome packet that you get that we've worked hard to make. Um, and the welcome packet, what is so interesting about it, I need to change my share uh, while talking. What's wonderful about the welcome packet is that it really kind of is your guide to how to enter into Belkanto Bootcamp from any place, whether you are the audience member or whether you are a singer. And later in this, we'll go through how might a singer use the gym floor. We're about to talk to um, our reading and listening experts about how um, they might encourage you to use our membership to learn more because we believe that coming out of of this time of no live performances at least in the united states for the most part we're working hard to help singers refine their skills but we can also help audience members um, opera fans opera lovers learn more um, about what makes singing great what makes opera great what is the history of that what are the things that singers um, get to do or need to do to, to perfect their art. So we have quite a, a welcome packet here that I think really can help you see kind of what is our philosophy. So I don't know if Rochelle maybe wants to talk about how we came up with this uh, triangle. Right. I, I must say the welcome packet is one of my favorite new things because it really made us sit down and try and think in very clear, graphic, interesting ways about what it is we do. And we had to think about what do we believe? How does a singer build their uh, technique from the ground up? And so we came up with this pyramid, which I must say is my is just my favorite thing, especially since it starts with mindset and it ends with mindset. It starts with the practice mindset brings you through the first set of exercises, which you will see on the on the website a little later, onset, legato, registration, agility. These are all things that you can do without having words in it, bringing you to language skills and poetry. When you add words and language, the poetic form to the mix, then how to look at the score itself, how to study the history of notation, what does all of it mean, what does the notes on the page mean, what language was the composer writing in, what did he mean when he wrote specific pitches, which pitches did he leave out, how do you ornament, what is the idiom and the style. And even at the, um, at the moment when that all comes together, that is when we are ready to think about our performance mindset. And that really is the tippy top of, of the pyramid. Uh, maybe Derek can take us a little further and we can get to the pies, which is my other favorite thing in the welcome packet. It helps a singer and also an audience member. You will see that the bottom uh, left, bottom right pie is for the opera fan. We really believe that all singers and lovers of singing have to engage in three things, sing, read, and listen. So on the bottom left, you will see the conservatory student should be doing a lot of reading and listening, right? Because it's a lot of history, a lot of learning. Um, so that is a suggested idea. What we're trying to tell you here is that this pie chart can move around. For example, when the professional singer is in rehearsal, he's mostly singing. A little bit of listening, a little bit of reading, but what we're trying to encourage is that everybody always engages in some version of a balance of these three things. I'm particularly talking to the opera fans. I know you love singing Nessun Dorma in the shower. We want you to come and sing with us. We have fantastic amateur uh, singers who are with us, who are signed up for our courses, and they're such an inspiration to the professional singers um, in our community and the other way around. So you are probably going to listen more than anything else. We want to encourage you to read. We will talk about book club in a bit and please continue to sing. Uh, Derek will take you through some of the other things. Other kind of interesting things. Um, this is about the gym floor. These are paths that you take, um, which we'll come back to in, in just a second. But we spent a lot of time coming up with 
kind of what are the questions that we ask uh, of the singers that we work with both um, in person and virtually? Um, what are the, the kind of philosophical ideas that we have that we try to impart both about setting goals for your study and for your lessons and being able to put your technique into words because one day you will probably teach and you'll have to explain it to someone else. Um, how to be proud of what you know, how to share that with, with others, um, and kind of an examination of your skill set uh, for yourself. We have some um, honesty check self assessment tools, um, some great quotes and habit trackers, and then even uh, blank. Uh, ornamentation and notes at the end for you to use if you want to print this out. Um, we also took the, the the approach of making what is the path that a singer might take, which is obviously maybe the most um, clear one. And I'll kind of do a live version of that if I'm going to learn a specific aria later. Um, but right now, let's talk about for opera lovers, uh, where you might want to start because you might feel like you're on on the outside of what, you know, what do I need from Belcanto boot camp? I've all, I've often been, um, I love watching the Olympics whenever they come on. And I always fantasize that we could have like opera Olympics because as a person who's, you know, I like working out, but I've never been into sports and I don't know a lot about the rules and I don't know a lot about the, um, technique that you need, but everyone can enjoy figure skating or gymnastics or what have you or swimming because you have someone telling you, this is what this person is doing. This is what we think they need to attempt. And it went well or not. And I just wish that it weren't uncouth to have that kind of guidance in live operatic singing of like, oh, high C coming up for Natrebko. And let's see what's going to happen. Oh, coloratura. Oh, around the, oh, and she made it and beautiful job. So I wish that we had kind of informed listening that did take the objective parts of what are the skills necessary, what are the measurable goals, um, and treated them in a way that the listener felt that they had more to judge rather than this is a beautiful voice or not. Um, and I think, you know, Derek, I think the amazing thing uh, as well about sports and sports commentary is that they also go into like the amazingness, the emotional content of the game. You know, it has it has all of those things. I have I have this vision of being able to plug in your your headset or or pair your Bluetooth with the Metropolitan Opera uh, system <laughs> to hear Derek commenting. But it is opera lovers are extremely close to our heart at Belcanto Bootcamp because singers love opera fans who really understand and love the art form, love to know what singers are doing. So here is a suggested starting path for you, right? As we saw in the pie chart, you might be drawn to us. We just had an email today from somebody saying, well, I'm really drawn to the Audiophile Society and Belcanto Book Club. It's like, yes, come join us. So that would be your entrance point, right? You read Stephen's blog, you join the Audiophile Society as a member, you join the book club, and then you start to hear people talk about things, about specific technical skills, about specific ways a singer is singing, and then you can go into the gym floor and you can start to explore what are these exercises that the singers are doing? What is it Teresa Castillo is doing? We will talk to Teresa in a bit. And you start to see this insider's view of the singer's process. And then over to Derek, if you maybe want to improve your Italian, Exactly. So you'll know that if you've been singing Nessun Dorma in the shower, that it is not no one is sleeping. It is let no one sleep. Contruntivo. So um, all that to be said is we want to make a place for everyone and we want to make the case for informing the audience. Um, an informed audience is the thing that will sustain opera, an important, uh, it's, it's the partner in the art form um, that we can play to and share and and you know we're really grateful to have had so many singers from so many different places, and now we need that help to get in opera fans um, because we believe that really empowering them to be connoisseurs of opera and not only enjoyers um, 
and not only ticket buyers or donors, it's so much more than that. It's really being an informed um, consumer of the art form. So um, why yeah, don't we really let me jump in here as well to to even drive this point home more. We really need your help because Derek and I know a lot of singers between us and we know quite a few opera fans, but we don't know enough of them. Right. And but you guys are the ones who have contact with all of those people. Please invite them to join our community. Yeah. Uh, we were just, we were brainstorming yesterday and it's like, you know, homestays, if you've been in young artist programs or those people who are just kind of the great mothers of the young artist program, these are the people who would love to know more. Why don't we invite uh, Stephen to talk a little bit about his curriculum and plans for the Audiophile Society? Oh, there he is. There he is. Hi, my friend. Great it's great to see you. Great to see you guys. This is a very exciting time. Uh, yes, I'd love to talk a little bit about um, the Guided by Voices Audiophile Society. We're doing a listening intensive of uh, three o'clock on Sunday afternoons beginning December the 13th and running for 12 consecutive Sundays through February the 28th of 2021. And thank God it'll be a new year, right? Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the curriculum, what we're going to what we're going to be doing. We're, we'll be listening to singers, recorded singers from all eras, from uh, the very earliest recorded uh, sound era, uh, just after the turn of the century into the 20th century, and listening all the way up to today's singers. But a lot of, in a, a lot of, um, a lot of emphasis on the historical singers, of course, because they're less, less well known. The first um, installment I call Mapping the Landscape, and that's just an overview of the last 120 years of recorded singing, talking about the different techniques of recording that were available at the time and how those have developed. From there, we go to Bel Canto in its birthplace, the Italian repertoire from Baroque through Verdi. Then we have a Let Florid Music Praise, which is a festival of coloratura and ornamentation. Bel Canto auf Deutsch, Wagner and Strauss, sung with beauty and style and no wobbles. We have Proud Songsters, which are leader, melody, and art song uh, recordings through the years. A Bel Canto European tour, French, Spanish, and Russian singing that also comes under the general rubric of what we call Bel Canto style. That can sing both high and low, is singing in extreme ranges. We'll hear some very, very high sopranos and some very low basses. Uh, armchair opera is an exploration of the heyday of the complete recorded opera, which really didn't become a thing until the advent of the LP in the 1950s. And the 1950s through the 1980s were the great heyday of recorded complete opera. Nowadays, we, there are very few commercial recordings. Um, if you're Joyce DiDonato, maybe you get to make a handle opera once a year, but there aren't that many commercial uh, studio recordings of opera anymore. Uh, February 7th, we'll have All Together Now, which will be duets, ensembles, and finales. In Praise of Love on Valentine's Day will be a Valentine's Day tribu a tribute to the theme of love. And on February 21st, we'll do uh, Bel, Bel Canto Pop, classic vocal uh, uh, virtuosity uh, in the form of uh, vernacular song with some some people you might be surprised to see and our final uh uh thing on uh presentation on february 28th will be favorites and requests where those who've been watching the series will requ request selections and singers that they would like to hear from and we'll have a few surprises there as well Stephen, I'm so excited about it. I have to say, um, I've known Stephen for a very, very long time, and he's always my go-to when I'm thinking about, or it's very often students will say, what do you think is the best recording of this and this and this? And I will always ask Stephen first, just like, Stephen, what do you think? Because he knows repertoire so well and he knows recordings so well. Um, a big part of why we are doing this is that not only young singers, but also opera fans can be a little over 
um, taken by the amount of stuff that's available on YouTube these days. You know, you just, you're like, I want to get into opera, but where do I click? Where do I click? When do I stop clicking? How, how do I like lead my ear? And that is really what the Audiophile Society is set up to do, to help you kind of listen to different things, compare in a world where all of a sudden we can just hear everything. I'm super excited about the Audiophile Society and I hope you all are too. I think, you know, if it's really not something that I would miss out on to have kind of Stephen's perspective as, you know, an internationally acclaimed tenor, the stages from the Metropolitan Opera to all across the world, having that experience now informing so many young singers by being the chair of voice at Mizzou. Um, he has so much experience and a wealth of, of having loved recorded opera for so long. Uh, you know, I can't wait to see what he pulls out. And I love hearing all the music that he puts on his videos, which have extended my listening repertoire. And I think also, you know, if, if you miss a week, it will be archived. Yeah. And that, um, it's, you know, it, it's not that you have to be there for all 12 weeks, but I think that I'm excited to hear what, you know, the conversation, what Stephen hears about uh, in the recordings and then what other people might hear, um, whether they are um, new to older recordings or not. It's a, it will be a great uh, replacement during COVID times for the the conversation in the Metropolitan Opera lobby, right? It's like we can we can no longer like go to the opera at the moment. But I hope that we will continue to do this even in post COVID times because it is always a fantastic idea to to share, to have like minded people, and and to share ideas, right? Yeah. So uh, the Audiophile Society is part of our Belfanto Bootcamp membership. Um, along with the gym floor um, where you can explore whether as a singer or not. But the Audio Plus Society is a membership activity along with the book club. Uh, and so thank you, Stephen, for joining us. And maybe we can have David, David, Dave, and Judith join us. Um, I've, lo I've lost my um, desktop, my mic. I know I have to turn off my camera, but I've I've lost you guys. Oh, we can we can take care of that. I turn think. me off. <laughs> Derek, can you help Stephen out? There we go. Hi, Judith. It's great to see you. And Dave is coming on as well. Um, Dave, as Derek said, is there. He is is our new bookshelf curator. Um, I want to tell especially my students, my young students, please go and look at what is posted there. There are fantastic ideas about repertoire already. I was just reading the latest uh, uh, blog post by Dave. Um, I want Dave and Judy to first tell us a little about what their experience was with the first book club. We just finished reading um, Stark's History of Bel Canto. And it has been a really wonderful experience. Uh, Dave, how did you experience it? I loved it. That's that's how I experienced it. What was really nice is I had read the book before in a, a, a history of vocal pedagogy class. But to come back, first of all, a few years later, having now that I'm teaching, I saw a whole, a whole lot of new things I hadn't noticed before. And then there are people in the group, of course, with uh, different perspectives. There were there are younger people who have very good questions, very smart young singers with with uh, inquisitive minds and asking really good questions. And then we have some more science oriented people, and they contribute a lot. And then Judith, who's more from an early music perspective, and she had a lot to share. And we had two coaches in there, and it was just. Um, things I wouldn't have noticed on my own. So it was nice to, I'm used to reading on my own. It was nice to come in and share this, both what I noticed and then learn from other people what they observed right. from reading and have these wonderful discussions. It was really, really interesting. I, I enjoyed it a great deal. You all probably know Judith from writing for multiple magazines, including Opera News. We are thrilled that she has been part of the Belcanto Bootcamp family basically from the start now. We feel like old, old friends I have known Judith from before, but I feel like I've really gotten to know her so much better, all of her loves, all of her her um, 
interests. Uh, Judith, can you tell us a little about uh, Fred Plotkin's 101, which is going to be our first reading, uh, which I th hope will be really enjoyable for opera fans to join, join us. I love this book and I've used it so many times with, I've used it with undergraduates in a kind of gen ed, gen ed music course. Um, and I've used it with adult learners, especially people who even have gone to the opera multiple, many, many, many times, but still feel like they don't know about this. They don't understand how this works. Um, I particularly love the introductory chapters um, later on, he takes you by the hand through 10 operas. But before he does that, he gives a fantastic overview of the business, the training, who does what in a performance, what are the fox, what are the voice ranges, um, just everything about kind of the opera. Um, and I find that even singers, even people who know the business, um, are interested in sort of seeing how he takes everything apart and his particular perspective on it. It's a wow. gr great book. I'm I'm very I'm very excited about this idea that we can bring all of these things together, right? Because audiophile society and book club are going to overlap, and so because we are one community, and over there on the gym floor, the singers are practicing doing their exercises, and all of these things jive together well, and we and it all inspires. Uh, the one inspires the other. I can completely see how we're going to be in a book club meeting and talk about something that Fred writes about in his book. And we're going to turn around and listen to something on Sunday and be like, wow, that really reminds me of this thing. And I think that that again is how that pie of listen, read and sing come together. And it's fun to do that with other people who has you know, some people are more into the reading part. Some people are more into the listening part. Some people are really like, I really just want to sing, but okay, it, yes, that was interesting to read. Oh my God, I've never heard that voice before. That is a wonderful thing. Um, Derek, what is your feeling about like book club? What is, was your experience? I loved book club. I, I of course loved that, especially the Stark Belcanto book. I like Dave had read it in school and it's so great to come back to something, you know, I guess that would have been, oh, embarrassingly nine years ago. Um, I can't believe that was nine years ago, but to come back to it with having worked with so many more singers, having so much more experience and also getting to hear everyone's kind of mindset um, about what they were reading. And it always devolved, you know, we we are a group that loves to talk so <laughs> it, would, it would keep going and i'm excited about the fred plotkin book because i was i was kind of skimming through it last night and i was saying oh wow i didn't know that oh wow like even though i know the repertoire i know how opera goes i know how to put an opera on its feet i i don't know all of the i couldn't tell you in 30 minutes from the beginning of the art form what happened in such a kind of concise way Right. So I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to studying that. I'm also looking forward to um, if you've seen Conrad Osborne's opera as opera. It's about that thick. Um, so he is actually partnering with us to do some projects uh, about his book, um, which is just a wealth of information of someone who's lived opera in New York City as a reviewer and has like just been in the art form. Um, so I'm excited about getting to know that, you know, I was born in 1989. So I think sometimes it's hard not to feel like I missed out on the golden age of most things opera, at least in, in New York. And I mean, I remember going to the city opera a few times, uh, but uh, believe it or not, but I think that you can kind of enter into the, the recent past uh, with these people, as well as enter into the historic past, the old past, um, through treatises, which we'll do with uh, Garcia, um, maybe even working on making a, a BCBC translation, which will be an exciting um, path. Just um, like Derek said about the Audiophile Society, book club is for members. Um, we will talk a little later about like how membership supports uh, the workings of Belcanto Bootcamp. We have a lot of different projects and we have a lot of um, 
irons in the fire and in a beautiful way everybody's membership supports all of these different things like if you are a reader and that is why you want to join your membership also supports a young singer in russia learning how to sing and that is kind of like a beauty a beautiful thing about our community if you want to read more about like where we come from and what that kind of african philosophy of ubuntu that is very much part of us is like we are a community and um, I am because we all are together. You can visit the website. Um, unlike Audio Audiophile Society, which already has dates, the book club will do something that we often do in the BCBC community, and that is poll. We put out a poll on the members only Facebook page, and we try to find the time when most of the members can join us. So we will do that um, in, a, in a while, like uh, towards the end of this year, to find a time that works for most people and just like the audiophile society if you cannot make it it is recorded and you can listen to it great thank you judith and thank Dick. you so Are much for coming um i think now why don't we talk about the singer approach um we've had lots of singers and we've you know it's the easiest and most kind of um obvious approach to the gym floor um and I thought we would do it. Uh, I've made gym tour, uh, gym floor tour videos so much that I can no longer say it, um, and kind of a look through. But I thought it would be an interesting thing to say if I were, for example, our Belcanto boot camper uh, Teresa, who's joining us, um, which we'll talk to in a little bit um, about who, because she appears in actually some of our uh, material, and she's someone that we've worked with in person for many years, who we know has found uh, kind of uh, that our approach has helped her and we're really glad to have her as part of our uh, Belcanto Bootcamp team. But say I wanted to, for example, I'm looking to add an aria to my repertoire and I've decided that I want to sing uh, Ecco mi nieta vesta, um, Giulietta's aria from Capuleti. So I know a few things about when I look at this aria the skills that I need, and I'm 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 a Belcanto boot camper, so I have learned to look at the score in a kind of technical approach kind of way. So I know that I'm going to need a messa di voce. I need to know how to interpret these appoggiaturas. Do they replace the note, or do they are they both two notes? Um, how long should I ask my pianist to wait after this? Uh, what do these accents mean? What does this little um, umlaut diaresis over the I me. Um, how does this accompaniment relate? Um, how do I build the agility and registration skills in my voice to handle these long skill, uh, long uh, melismas? How do I group the notes together, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Um, I could go on and go on, but this is how we aim to equip uh, singers and coaches to look at arias as groups of technical skills in a kind of aim and shoot, execute thing of this is coming up. I can only think about what's, what skill I need going forward. And these are the, the tool set that I need to build. So our goal is that you can go to our Belcanto Bootcamp gym floor and say, okay, very first note of Ecomi is traditionally sung long and with a mesa di voce. So in our daily exercises, we take the approach of practicing one note as do all of the treatise writers mostly and every kind of major voice teacher had a, um, a kind of method that they would write. And so we have that written down, even though we don't have recordings of, of singers from many of the uh, eras that we talk about, we do have the fact that they transmitted what they taught through writing. So here we have a, this is like a Rochelle's distilled Belcanto bootcamp version of all of the treatises and how we encourage you to practice one note. Here's a recording of Teresa being coached on one note live. And here's one note exercises from Garcia, from Marchesi, from Cinti d'Amoro, um, Pauline Viardot, uh, Tozzi, et cetera, et cetera. We have all of this kind of how different writers uh, put it in their own words. And then the other way to sing one note is to change the dynamic. And we at Belcanto Bootcamp embrace the message of voce as like 
the basic registration exercise. So this is an essay by Rochelle based on uh, the beginning posts of Bakai, where we, we aim to start the Bakai book, but we believed that like every other method, we shouldn't start with a scale, we should start with one note. So we made our own version of that. Here's Kori from his singer's preceptor about the Mesa di Voce and a bunch of ways to practice um, singing one note, which is also in the video of Teresa. Um, say that, you know, if you think back to our pyramid that we had, if I want to make sure that I'm not gonna get frustrated and that I'm making my best choices practicing, we put that even before singing one note. So we have um, lots of uh, quotes from how we apply Rotella's golf is not a game of perfect to singers um, and how they are. So on the first page of the row, a role, a singer must have fun. So that's performance mindset, but the foundation of good singing is a pre-sing routine. We come up with pre-shot routines all the time and our singers have enjoyed posting and sharing about that. And so that you're ready to approach your practice in a trust mindset and that you're able to practice wisely and make um, positive choices while you do that. We have lots of conversations with different people about embracing positivity, um, how to empower ourselves um, through education, um, through knowledge, through building the right team, um, through surrounding ourselves by with with the right people, with the right skills. It's so funny to look at all these screen caps of all the Zoom calls and see all the different lengths of hair and quarantine. Um, so, you know, if you want to work, you know, I picked uh, Julieta because it starts with a big recitative. So here we have a guided uh, libretto preparation of how you might find the original form of the libretto, how you might find uh, the translation, how you might go about passing. We believe in prima le parole, is not only the Italian class that I ran, it's our approach to, um, and the composer's approach to how opera was written. It was first written as text. Um, all great stories were told in poem form, in poetry. So we need to know that poem before we even go to look at that score. Um, so how might we be informed by that? Here's score preparation. How do we mark up our score? You'll see here, uh, we have score markups from a lot of things that uh, we've studied over the summer of recitatives, where how might we, before, if, if recitative needs to be demystified, if it just looks like a string of words and notes, that is our goal is how to say, these are the skills you need to know to see the poetic form as it belongs on the page, how uh, verticality in music, especially in recitative in this style, isn't so much of a thing as far as orchestra and singer, we have from Garcia, the treatise saying that the orchestra and singer should play a part, um, et cetera, et cetera. We examine the ends of the lines in the poem and the ends of the lines and how rests are written in the score. Where might you, so as you make choices, as you're learning, you have the information to see what belongs where. And rather than make a prescription to you of this is the way Julieta goes, no you're gonna take your imagination and your knowledge and put it together. So we take, these are the facts that we know, and this is my musical mind and what I might think. Um, Derek, maybe let me jump in here for a second and just say a little about that. In this way, Belcanto Bootcamp really tries to be very different. We really do not try to tell you exactly how to sing everything. We just try to highlight what skills you need, what knowledge you need to have so that you can unpack the score from a knowledge base and skill based idea and then sing your own imagination. So this has been extremely important for us also during COVID times where singers so often had to sing with pre-recorded tracks or like kind of fit in with how somebody else thinks it goes, right? So this is a very big part of, of our work is to arm you, arm you with knowledge so that you can truly be an empowered singer and make your own choices. So we're going to play some singing from Teresa, but for example, if Teresa wanted to work on a variety of dynamic expression in Oh, they say to Romeo, Inglaterra, and how might she want to sing these B flats and A flats, in what dynamic does she want to change them? This is part of a registration exercise that we at Belcanto Bootcamp call Soar and Float. 
you'll find in our registration circuit. We have versions of it for all voice types. Um, and there are the things, and this is Teresa. I'm sharing my sound. Hey, sweetie. Oh, it's quite for And how does that happen? Oh, no. Hold on. I can maybe share. Um, Soar and float. Nope. I don't oh, is know. that the one with the weird color? There, I've, we've uploaded it so many times. Um, I'm just going to stop share. Why don't you talk to Teresa for like- I'll talk to Teresa and you find it. Yeah, we've, you know, like we, we're figuring out all the technical issues as we go through this. Hi, Teresa. It's so great of you to join us. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. Um, yeah, just surviving, you know? Just surviving. <laughs> I want us to talk a little about this business of breaking down the walls of the practice room. Um, I was having, I must say in the last couple of weeks, I had oh, some real, oh. um, I'm going to mute Derek for a second. <laughs> he muted himself. Um, I had some real like emotional moments in the last weeks, you know, as we were getting ready to make this information available public, um, to the public, because I feel like this relationship between me and you, between me and the singer, I've, I've always been so attached to it being so private, being in closed doors, you know, it's what I call Vegas, what happens here stays here. Um, and, and through the, through COVID, we really discovered so much at Belcanto Bootcamp, how much fun it was for people to practice, um, exercises together. So I wonder if you want to tell us a little about what your experience is. Of course, you've been doing these exercises for a much longer time, but but what your experience was doing that in public and what kind of made you be like, yes, I'm totally willing to go on a website and show how I'm working on, on my technique. Yeah, sure. So I think one of the biggest things is, I know for me, especially when I was first starting as a singer, I had this almost paralyzing fear of making a mistake in public. And the more uh, vocally athletic I get, I guess you could say, um, the, the less uh, fearful I am of making a mistake. It's kind of like, I don't know, uh, practicing in public and actually working on things that I find very difficult, especially in like the chest voice or, or registration issues or whatever, um, doing that and then failing or maybe not necessarily failing, but well, yeah, failing in, in public and having people see that, um, it almost makes me feel more bold or more emboldened to sing and, and to do what I do. Because the thing is like, what I love about these exercises is when, once I started really working on them, like really actually focusing on my chest voice and listening to what you and Derek had to tell me, <laughs> I, I, I was able to trust myself more and also able to uh, create the sounds that I wanted to create without, I guess the only way I can say is with abandon. Let's, let's listen a little and then talk a little more. Great. The, I have a fancy new iPhone 12 Pro Max, which the downside of it is the video is so good that YouTube gets freaked out. <laughs> hey, sweetie. Right. Hi. <laughs> Chest only. Calm. No pressure. Head to head, so. different vowel for the second note. Say for example, but stay in chest. Or something else.
like to to like get all of the vowels mm -hmm. to talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. Now about all. makes me so happy you are such like a child of bel canto boot camp i just love it um do you want to say something it's i think that people think that it's interesting that we work so much on registration right how has your your you, you said a little something about it how has that really informed um your voice as a whole do you think Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, it kind of, so before I started really working on it, it was kind of like I had two or three different voices. They weren't connected. It was my voice, but it wasn't the same quality throughout. And then once I actually started working on my chest voice and working on registration, then I mean, it, it, it's like the, the glue that put, that, that stuck everything together. Right. Absolutely. And, and also, I mean, it's made working on chest voice, especially being a high coloratura that sings Queen of the Night, Servinetta. Um, I mean, I have to sing a lot of high floaty stuff and whatever, but I also, a lot of my repertoire, as you know, um, it's like Lucia, I go below the staff as well. So I have to, in order to be heard, I would have to work on that part of my voice anyways, because I'm not wearing a mic. So... Right. What do I do? I work on it and I work on it using these exercises that have proven that it, that directly informs the high, how the high register is going to work in your voice and how the middle register is going to work. Right. So, it makes so it you, better. you know, for everybody, for everybody watching, like dynamics and registration is a big part of what we do because I feel like in my studio, I feel it's the thing that people have the most trouble with, right? And why do we do it so straight up right at the beginning? Because in the Italian repertoire, you cannot run away from it, right? The composers were all writing for voices that were registered in a specific way. And so if you go to the registration rumble, right? No, the registration, what is it? <laughs> the registration circuit. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I forget. No, if you go to the registration circuit, you will see a lot of that research that really shows how all of the old Italians basically trained voices in the same way and the composers wrote for voices that were trained in this way. So we are taking really a step back into the treatises. Again, as Derek said, these exercises are exercises that I've done for many years with singers in my studio and they're just kind of amalgamations of 
of old school Italian exercises. And then during the summer, because I had time, I wrote them out on pieces of paper and did the thing that people asked me to do for many years, but I decided I never wanted to do. And then here we are, and now they're on a website. Teresa, thank you so much for visiting with us. Derek needs to take us through the rest of the tour. Yeah, I, as I pull up the rest of the tour, I'll just say that, um, where are you tour? Um, yeah, registration we is so the mother of dynamics, is the mother of a lot of expression. And we found time and time again that coordinating the, the laryngeal passaggio is what oftentimes calms or brings more options and more beauty to the rest of the voice. Um, like any instrument, it works in octaves and uh, fifths. And the biology and the physics of it all allow that kind of work to transfer throughout the voice. And we're the first people to tell you that, yes, you need to sing in chest voice, but chest voice does not mean loud. Mm -hmm. Chest voice does not mean vulgar or strong. Chest voice is just part of, of what we do and it's available at any dynamic. Okay, I think I have my share screen. Um, so we've done that um, registration work. We've been through mindset. Uh, daily exercises basically splits up into one note and two notes. Um, anyone who works with us it has, knows that we believe in the virtue of being able to sing a long steady note. Um, oftentimes we find singers are either very skilled at singing lots of notes or slow notes. And both of them are skills that every singer needs to have. Um, speaking of lots of notes, we have agility mobility. Um, we over the summer have come up with this um, thing that we developed kind of through Vakai, but it's applicable to anything of envisioning um, coloratura as units of pitches. So, and how they relate to things. You see here, um, this pattern is uh, an inverted mordant. This pattern is an inverted turn. Um, and so that if you have clear in your mind before you sing the notes, um, what the pattern is, because if you have to sing that fast, you cannot think of one note. Um, so here are a bunch of the treatise examples, which if you are trying to learn to your voice for the first time and you see this, you might just want to throw the book out the window rather than trying to sing, ah, 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 ah. much easier to start with, ah, 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 ah. and yep. then any of this can be combined. Um, Basically, what I what I did with the coloratura exercises, and we're going to continue to build. That's one of the main things we are doing now. Is we're going to build um, out more exercise sheets, especially for coloratura, that basically just kind of breaks down all of the hundreds of different patterns and picks the one, pick the ones that are used the most often in the repertoire. Yeah, and we because we focus so much on Italian style music, uh, florid, the execution of florid music is a necessary skill for any singer. And it's something that we have tried very hard to um, give people actual actionable tools, um, whether it's units of pitches. And we believe starting fa singing fast starts with singing slow. Um, we have a, you can read all about how vibrato rate versus coloratura actually works. Um, through a lot of research that's been done. Uh, we also believe in a lot of, this is kind of step before your recitative thing um, to get your translation. We have phrasal doublings, explanations of what that is. Um, we believe that um, knowing the form of the libretto and of the Italian poetry is really essential in order to be a real master of the art. There are lots of times in um, the repertoire where the poetic meter and the musical meter do not um, intertwine. Um, examples are Regnava nel silencio, vedrai carino, uh, quel guardo il cavaliere, um, la donna immobile, where it starts with a, a downbeat, but that is not the downbeat of the poem. And in order to tell the story, you have to tell the story with the actual Italian language. It would be the I guess, example of saying, Marie had a little lamb. And people would say, what do you know? That's not a story. 
Um, so we believe in like really equipping people with the knowledge to, to communicate, to express, to tell the story, um, and also to know where to look um, to get translation skills. There's lots of um, archaic Italian and poetic Italian as, as Latin morphed into Italian uh, that we have today. There's lots of stuff that you may not easily find in the dictionary. Um, and we've tried to make it uh, available to you in a, in a concise form of this is what this archaic verb form might be so that you don't, at the end of the day, I know the feeling well of, I think this is right, but it's still a question mark. Derek, and would you just zoom in for one second on one of those sheets? Um, because this is a good example um, of the kind of language work that we do. This is not a website where you come and you, I don't know, pay one ninety nine for a translation and you write it in your score, right? So here you will see Derek's timeline of tenses. Everything that we study, we understand where it fits in the tenses. You're going to really look at all of your uh, language like that from a grammatical perspective and learning the tools to translate, right? So if you're lazy, I don't know if we're for you, but hopefully you want to really get good at the skills yourself. And then this is a good place to come for an Italian uh, from an Italian perspective. Yeah, I will just share one of the other things that we have. It's not. Quite, oh, the grammar sheets. Yes. But these are. Um, yes. Here you see um, where we take. So we're not doing translation for you, but we are helping you recognize what is the syntax and as as Latin morphed into Italian, one of the things that Latin has is declensions uh, so that you can tell what part of how every how what part of speech how every word functions by it, how it looks. Um, in Italian, that's not the case. Um, and so it's just like reading Shakespeare where you might have to know to flip the words around. But imagine reading Romeo and Juliet if you don't speak uh, English that well. Um, so here is a kind of, you know, simplified guide to tell you what goes together and, and so much of your timing choices and your expressive choices have to do with how these words are linked up together. And this is how we use our um, tense and mood chart to say, okay, Susanna comes and she says, giunse al fine del momento, in the, in the as far past back as we can go, that I will do this thing in the future. And then she talks in the future or in the present. And what if that is actual? What is that? What if that is hypothetical? What is something that she wants? Just to kind of help guide you in making your translation and making your scene out of this character into when the action takes place and whether it is real or unreal, realis or irrealis in linguistic terms. I'll Guys, stop before I do um, you. I'm telling you, whether you are thinking about what am I saying or how do I have to say it, that cannot be found in IPA source. It cannot be found in like a translation source. It can only be found in your understanding of the language, of the poetry, of the grammar. That is the only way you really sing and mean something, right? When you are really speaking, when the character is really expressing and you're not acting with some sugar coat idea while you don't really actually know what you're saying. So um, this is a hugely important part of our work is uh, Italian that is really run by Derek. We're going to have Vanessa join us, who is one of our trusty Belcanto boot campers and the uh, face behind social media and uh, a lot of what we have been up to and the welcome packet and all that. Um, Vanessa, do you want to help kind of wrap this up and talk about? Yeah, I do. I was just listening. Um, thank you for having me on and inviting me into the team, into the family. Um, I hope that everyone who's listening now and who, you know, listens to the playback and revisits this resource, this membership event, feels kind of what I'm feeling now. Just one, that the, 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 the tools that we've developed as we've worked to present it, the different ways that we've tried to present everything 
One, it's incredibly dense. There's so much information. Frankly, there's so much information cooking around in the two brains of Derek and Rochelle. It's a lot of information and my job has been kind of like organizing it, writing it down and you know, revealing it to people in a timeline that makes sense. Um, but there's a lot in here for you. And it was really important for that specific point for Derek and Rochelle that there be a ton of information for you, that you have plenty of resources, guides, um, and material to get busy empowering yourselves as singers, as audience members, as coaches, as teacher, teachers, friends, parents, any kind of ally to singers, to the singing world. They wanted everybody to have a piece and to feel like they could sort of um, inch our art form forward. Um, and so I'm really proud of them for that. I kind of started just as a friend on the couch, like in March, when the two of them were like, God, the world has changed in March. Our art form has been leveled in a way. And the I watched these two concern themselves with that question, how do we get our art form to continue? How do we continue to empower singers? How do we continue to inspire audience members? They asked themselves that question and then they absolutely delivered a solution. I remember very, uh, very clearly at the beginning around the world, every opera singer, opera lover would ask themselves, what do we do about this time? Because our world has changed. I really believe as their friends and as a business partner that they have given um, a solution and that solution is to make all of these resources accessible. Um, you know, that I believe that they believe and they've flushed it out in their system um, on their website in the membership that every singer out there has something significant to contribute. Every singer, um, every audience member has is able to help our art form, our business um, last and flourish. They just need the tools and the resources to get there without the burden of time, without, you know, feeling like they have to be part of some elite pedigree without being without feeling like they have to know the right people and exact the right kind of career everything to get it done they just need to have um, some honesty with themselves about where they are in their process they need to have the resources they need to have a community that supports them being honest with themselves um, and they need to have fun and I think that they've delivered that beautifully and um, it's accessible and it's it's a little bit more accessible even so right now because just like everything on planet earth right now it's cyber monday black friday weekend so i hope everyone uh checks that out asks us questions i think for our names and our faces are you know we're on instagram we're on everything if you have questions please let us know we want you to feel like you can do this um and that you have access to it 20 percent off site wide so what does that mean that means the membership, we have a monthly membership, all access, on-demand access to everything that you've seen. And I swear there's a hundred times more pages than what we've shown you today on the website. 20% off the monthly membership, um, if that's something that you want to do. If you're already a member and you want to go even deeper, Rochelle and Derek have created this opportunity to dive into specific skills. Let's say like I know for sure, I have no idea how to generate my own um, ornament. I have no clue how to do that with integrity um, and with confidence. We have a specific intensive for that skill set, how to do it idiomatically, et cetera. 20% um, off those intensives as well. Um, Thank you so much, Vanessa. Like, what, a, what a great partner uh, you are to us. And thank you so much for all the energy and passion that you bring to us. Um, maybe I can just in wrap up say, as uh, Vanessa says, check out the intensives. We didn't have time to really take you through that, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, maybe I can just add my, my thoughts to Vanessa's here. Derek said the other day, you should call one of your singers and ask if they still have the first coaching. And if you can like have that and just cut together like all of the things you say in a first coaching, because literally in my regular life, 
half of what is really fleshed out on the website I try to condense and stick into one hour and try to tell a singer as much of it as I can so that they can be as process oriented. Maybe I should just say that the beauty of this for me is that I am able to share not only with people I don't know, but people I've known for a long time, all of the background, all of the research that comes to all of those ideas all of the tools that they need to really, as you say, empower themselves and be able to do it so that when we work in person, we can be so much more effective. And I, I, I want to say that it is the one good thing that came out of COVID for me, that it taught me that I can reach more people more effectively, give them more information um, for less money then they would have to normally pay not only to me but to people everywhere around the world to try and put together your own little and we've, um, and we've seen throughout all of this time how different people from different phases of all of our lives have come and been joined by this shared language um whether they were caramore alums from before my time during my time um which was a summer program that we always taught at um and just kind of that are united by the truth of community and a shared language and shared experience. And now as we seek to involve more people and a wider base and opera fans into really having an informed language, how everyone's membership supports everyone's learning. It's not a business where the singer to get better has to put a sizable check on the piano or leave that memo that's going, that, you know, is coming out of your unemployment check at this moment um, in so many cases to get better or working virtually. What we've tried to do is give the skills and teach what we believe can be taught um, in a guided practice um, to, to distill that into a kind of compendium that can be used both by um, singers of any level, but also singers as they become teachers, coaches, to have a, a solid uh, foundation and also for opera fans to have a window in into what makes a, a capable and confident singer um, and so I think that's kind of what we've aimed to do um, I think that I think that Derek sums it up beautifully that basically what we're doing is we're doing all of the skills that we can effectively do online we are not trying to say I don't ever want to see you in my studio again I'm sitting at my piano I'm so ready to see you uh, when the time is right uh, to go back to coaching but I will never ever have to waste any time in the, my private work talking about trying to explain to a singer quickly how Italian poetry works because they will be able to have all of those resources without me having to to cut it down to like just the bare basics. Uh, Derek reminds me that I should tell you that next weekend we have a two day special event that will be public. Um, it is called Guided by Women, which of course is a play of on Guided by Voices. On Saturday afternoon, the 5th at 3 o'clock, we will be joined by four singers, Janae Brugger, Fleur Baron, Candice Hoyce and Hannah Ludwig to talk about themselves and their business and how they have pivoted during COVID, what they have learned during COVID and how they are moving forward. And on Sunday, we are talking to Anna de Archuleta, manager Preeti Gandhi and Afton Battle, both administrators, Dana Varga, whom you probably know from the Empowered Singer, and my friend Fenlon Lam, who has a fantastic production company called Paper Moon Opera. I know all of these women uh, personally, and I know almost all of them, with the exception of Anna, as singers first. So I am excited to host conversations with these fantastic people about new ideas, old skills, old things, things that they have learned, how they are moving forward. Um, this will be public and we, it will be on our website and on our Facebook pages. You will be able to find the links. It will be um, public Zooms. Anybody will be able to come and visit with us. Um, 
oh, this, there is like the Legato police officer, Simon Bocanegra, who is the official um, Bel Canto boot camp mascot. Um, did we say everything we were planning to say, Derek? We do. Uh, we think we did. So Cyber Monday, uh, if you're watching this in real time or tomorrow goes on until the end of tomorrow, um, please check us out. Uh, we try to make this as, accept as accessible of a price um, for everyone that is possible. Follow us on Instagram. If you're not in the Belcanto Bootcamp group on Facebook, make sure to uh, join that. Um, and we look really forward to um, growing our community and welcoming as many people as possible and equipping audiences, singers, teachers, coaches, puppy dogs to know about what um, good singing can give to the world. We are looking forward to seeing you all next weekend on Zoom. And after that, in Audiophile Society, book club, intensives on the gym floor. We want to invite all our guests to come back. Hopefully they are still there. Are you all still listening? Judith, Dave, Teresa, Stephen, if you can switch on your cameras and wave goodbye to the people it has been great to see you all um thank you so much diva ball from the piano